Ladies and gentlemen, here's another episode of React Redux series. And this is the fifth one. In the first four videos, we learned about what, what Redux really is, how it works independently, how it works with React. And the fourth one was how to update the state immutably. And now in this video, we're going to learn about combining multiple reducers. Basically, we're going to learn how to split the reducer into multiple reducer and then combine. Uh, it can be tricky, but uh, with TechSith, nothing is tricky. Everything has to be simple, right? If you're not following the entire series, do so. I'll provide a link here. And I also have a full React series, which you can also follow. And welcome to TechSith Tutorials. All right, just before we start, we need to really understand what we're trying to do because those who are new to this, they're really confused. Why do we need to split the reducer into multiple reducers and why do we need to combine them, right? When your project grows, you divide your team into multiple teams where they work on multiple modules of the same project. It's easier if the reducer are kind of split so they, they have their own reducer and it's easy to manage, okay? So how you do it, it completely up to the project, what kind of project you're using. But remember, a Redux God only allows one reducer. It doesn't allow multiple reducer. So in the store, you only pass one reducer. So if you split it, you have to combine it and then pass it to your store. Now there are tricky things that could happen. Like when you originally have access, one action can access one, property in the state. Now, if you split it, now that action goes here in this reducer and then the property go in the other one, then there is a way to actually access it. Uh, so we're going to look at all of it. And that's where the complexity goes. So so what I'm going to do, I'm going to have two buttons and then um, two numbers. Okay. And when I click on the uh, uh, one of the buttons, basically it would add the other numbers value into this. So if I have one one, it would become two one and if I click on here it would basically add two plus one so it would become two three and so on and so forth right and so first we'll have a one reducer with this state with two properties a and b uh, for for each button and then we'll split it and see how we can access it okay so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna build two columns so I can have a class name equal to let's say column we haven't really defined this class in the CSS we'll do it in a minute but inside we'll have a div and a button so the div would hold a value so I can have a span with a and another span and let's assume that there is a already a prop called a so I'm just gonna say this dot props dot a a is the property inside a state okay all right and the button would say update a and I can actually copy this and create another button which would be B and it would have a B state and it would say update B so in the app.css I can define that column if I make a display uh, it's a inline block that would make two columns and I can just simply add some margin let's say 40 pixels so we don't want to make it too fancy all right so I have uh, two buttons update a and update B right now it's not gonna update anything because we haven't really set up anything right uh, so next we will try to do that all right so to build the reducer we're gonna in the source folder I'm gonna have a new folder called store and inside the store I can have a new file called uh, reducer.js Right, so inside inside the reducer, I'm going to have initial state. Uh, state, we're gonna speed through kind of some of the stuff, and it will have two properties. A, I'll uh, just set it up to uh, as initial as a one, and B, set it up as one as well. The reducer equal to, it will have a state, the initial state, and it would have actions right and let's just return state for now so we'll handle the functionality later and we can export it export default uh, reducer 
All right, so we can use it somewhere. Now inside the index.js, I'm going to do whatever necessary to um, create the store. All right, so what I've done in, in index.js that I've gotten the reducer, imported the reducer that we just created, imported create, uh, create store from Redux and provider uh, component from React Redux, uh, created the store with the reducer that we just imported, and then wrap the app component with the pro provider component and just pass a store there. Uh, typical stuff that you need to do, um, you know, to plug in your Redux, okay? Now let's focus back on the app.js where we're gonna build the, where we're gonna build map state to props and map uh, dispatch to props. So let's do that, const map map store to props and we're gonna get the store here and it returns an object where we just gonna map this to property a and b right so we can say a is nothing but store dot a and b is nothing but store dot b so we have two properties mapped and we can similarly do map uh, dispatch to props now we haven't built the actions yet so, so build it let's build it so in the button uh, one the update a we can say on click mm -hmm. equal to this dot props update a so that will be our action and similarly for the B I can just copy and paste here because it's going to be similar and this should be update B and here I can map these actions so I can say update A is and the type we can call it be let's say update A and then for B we should have a similar so I'm just going to copy and paste and we're just going to call it update B. And now we can connect it. So we need to import, obviously, uh, connect from uh, React Redux that we can use it here. So we can say connect. Again, all of this stuff I covered in a previous tutorial. So if you haven't gone through this, you can do so. So here I can say map uh, store to props and I can pass map dispatch to props. So now uh, one thing I forgot was here for the map dispatch to and we need to pass a dispatch so it's available. And now if I look at it it works but still I don't have this because I really haven't defined the actions yet inside the reducer so next we want to do so in the reducer we can have two events so if the action dot type uh, let's say it's equal to update a then what we want to do we want to simply return um, first we want to copy create a copy of the state the current state and then we can say if it's a then we need to update a right with the current a plus uh, current B and similarly for B we want to do the same thing Here we want to update B. All right, so that should work. So now, if I click on update A, it adds one plus one, it makes it two. Again, if I do this, it should add two plus one and makes it three. If I do this, it should do three plus one, makes it four. And if I do again, it should make it seven. All right, so it works now. Now it's time to actually split our reducer into multiple reducers so how do we do that so it's pretty simple all we need to do is uh, 
let's create two separate files. So we're going to say reducer a.js. And the second file is going to be reducer b.js. Okay. And what I'm going to do is copy the entire thing into a and b. Okay. And inside a, we are only going to keep the functionality related to a, uh, even state. So here, I don't need to be here. So this is only going to have a is going to have initial state, which is a, and then action type update a and no B. All right. Similarly for B, we are going to remove a from the state and action type a as well from here. All right. So now that we have split the reducer into two, we need to plug that in into index.js where we initially were plugging reducer here, right? So I can actually comment this out for now and import those two reducer. So I can say import uh, reducer A from, let's say store slash reducer A and import reducer B from, well, this would be import from store slash reducer B. Okay, so now we have two reducers. So how do we really combine it? So to combine it, we need to have um, a special functionality from, it's a Redux functionality, so it should be inside the Redux. So it's called combine reducers. So we need to get that. And before we even pass it to the store, we need to create a root reducer. So we can say const root reducer equal to, we can use a combined reducer and instead of just passing as an argument, we need to provide kind of a namespace here. So I'm going to say RA for the reducer A and RB for the reducer B. All right. So now we have one reducer and we can pass this root reducer into the store. All right, so now inside app.js, initially we used to have, you know, store, store.a. Instead, we have to use that namespace. So we have ra.a. And we will have, for b, we'll have rb.b. So that is fixed. But if you look at the each reducer, there is a one issue. So before, remember, uh, when I click on the update A button, it was updating, adding uh, state A into B, right? Now, B is no longer available. So this is not going to work because there is no state B. So how do we really access B now that we have split the reducer? So for that, we need to actually pass it as a, a payload into this uh, reducer. So how do we do that? So if I have, if I go back in A, uh, the only place a state is available fully is all the way here when I do the on click. So I have the entire prop available and so when I click on A, instead of just clicking I need to pass something here. So let's convert this into a function so I can pass it uh, an argument so now I can pass what? Uh, this, this is A, so I need to pass B, right? So we can say this dot props dot B, right? So if I look at here, I have this prop B, which is nothing but store dot RB dot B, okay? And as you can see, I, I need to also do the same thing here, right? But here, instead of um, B, we would need A, right? So here I can say this dot props dot a and now that our event takes an argument we have to pass it here as well so for a we are passing B so let's just call it a B and here we're gonna call it 
also b and we can pass b here and for for this we can pass a in nutshell since we cannot access a from b and b from a we need to actually get it from the all the way top level where when we click on the event that time it will it will pass that prop as a payload and when it comes to the reducer it will come in an action right so instead of for for a instead of state.b we have to say action.b and similarly in the reducer b we are passing a right so instead of state.a we are saying action.a since it's coming as a payload right and now if i go back here and i run it it works as a charm as it used to but this time all the reducers are we have two reducers instead of okay so that's it folks uh, so for the next video let's just keep it a surprise so i'm just going to continue more react redux video and so if you want to follow it i'll provide a link here uh, to the playlist and i hope you learned something new from this tutorial if you did please like subscribe and provide a constructive comment don't forget to like <laughs> and you can support the channel uh, multiple ways you can support via patreon i'll provide a link here you can also support it by providing a translation uh, you know provide a cc on this video the detail is in description and you can also uh, buy merchandise from teespring i'll provide a link here and thank you